We're clearly a well-oiled machine here. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't think I'm in. You're in, okay. Start listening, start speaking. Yeah. Here we, here we go, I think I'm in. Okay. I don't, I don't see you listed as a speaker. Okay. We've... Um, can everyone hear me? I can hear you. <laughs> That's the main thing. But you're right next to me. <laughs> All right. Okay. Just so everyone knows, Elon Musk gave me about 20 minutes notice. So he's also going to go on to <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Um, so like this whole thing came only came together in like a matter of hours. So um, it came together by a very speculative email, yes. uh, which I, I didn't think would even be responded to. And you were like, "No, let's do it tonight." Sure. Um, anyway. All right, are we, are we, we're actually filming, just so everyone knows, we're filming this for the BBC. So we have like three cameras and, <laughs> and loads of lights. Um, but this is also being listened to um, around the world. Yeah, it's uh, unique. Open and transparent. <laughs> there we go. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Wait, can you, am, <laughs> is my audio coming through? Just checking. Yeah. Okay. Um, and and t is James invited to? Well, it yeah, doesn't really be matter because I should be on, right? Speaker. Yeah, am I in? I don't see you listed as a speaker. Okay, Absolutely. Gonna... <laughs> well, okay, we'll nice. have to make sure that, that, that <laughs> both mics are on at the same time, though, or oh, oh, we'll get feedback. I'm just gonna. I'm just going to mute it. There we go. Okay. Are we good, guys? Wow. Okay. <laughs> We've got 200,000 people listening. <laughs> that is great. All right. Okay. Great. Should we do this? Yes. Uh, so I'll keep this here, I guess. Uh, so you can kind of keep it. Yeah, right. This is, yeah, about around that. Around, yeah. yeah. Is, is that in shot? <laughs> okay. It doesn't actually matter if the phone's in shot. I think we all know that that, that you're, you're doing yeah, it to it's not top too. secret. All right. Okay. Fine. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start asking you questions. Great. Fire away. All right. Um, first, why, why did you agree to do this this interview with the BBC? Um, I don't know. I like spontaneity, and uh, I don't know. There's, there's a lot going on. And it seems like I, I actually um, do have a lot of respect for the BBC. Um, Although sometimes I forget what the BBC stands for, you know, but uh, what is it? Just kidding. <laughs> you know um, what it stands for. <laughs> yes, I do. Um, so, um, yeah, yeah, so there's, there's a lot going on. Um, so I thought this might be a good opportunity to uh, answer some questions. And, um, you know, I guess uh, maybe get some feedback too. Um, what should we be doing different? Um, I know the BBC, for example, is not thrilled about being labeled uh, state affiliated media. Not, not exactly. I mean, I was going to get to that later, but let's go for it now. It's officially objected to that term. Do you want yeah. to respond to it? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, we're, we're, I mean, our goal is simply to uh, have, um, to, you know, uh, to be as uh, truthful and accurate as possible. So, um, I think there's, uh, I think we're, we're, we're adjusting the label to be publicly funded, which I think is perhaps. Uh, not too objectionable. We're trying to be accurate. Uh, I'm not the BBC, but, <laughs> <laughs> but pu pub publicly funded is how the BBC describes. It's, okay, okay. It's, so that would be accurate. That's, uh, if we use the same words that the BBC uses to describe itself, right. that presumably would be okay. I'm not asking you for a yes or no, since you're not running the BBC per se. You're, but it's probably it seems to pass. Uh, a reasonable, reasonable. So you're, so you're going to change those labels on the TV, Twitter feed, and yeah, also, yeah, yeah, also yeah, NPLs yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. publicly funded. Good. Basically, that, that's we're trying to be as accurate as possible. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fine. Um, first of all, I just want to clear something up. Are you sleeping in the office? Here. I sometimes sleep in the office. Like in the library. Five days a week. No, no. Three days a week. <laughs> I'm not here five days a week. Um, but uh, there's a, a library that nobody goes to uh, on the uh, seventh floor, and uh, there's a couch there, and I, some, I sleep there sometimes. Okay. Okay. Um, in terms of 
the general overview, the reason why I think we've, you've agreed to do this is because you wanted to talk about the first six months as chief executive owner of Twitter. Um, yes, kind of like whatever you want to talk about. Yeah. Right. So how do you think it's gone? Well, uh, it's not been boring. <laughs> <laughs> it's been quite a roller coaster. Uh, so, um, I mean, things are going, I think, you know, reasonably well. I mean, we're, we're, we've seen some all-time highs in terms of total user time. So, uh, we, we passed uh, uh, 8 billion user minutes uh, per day, uh, which is a lot of user minutes. Um, so, um, you know, so usage is up. Uh, growth is good. Um, the site works, uh, mostly. Um, you know, point we've had a few glitches here and there, but uh, the site is, is working fairly well. Um, and we're doing it with a small fraction of the original, you know, headcount, so. I mean, you, you mentioned outages there. There have been several. Yeah. And we, we've actually spoken to an engineer who works at Twitter, and they yeah. said that the plumbing is broken here, and it's on fire, and there could be problems at any minute. Do you, do you, do you accept that? I mean, there have been a few outages, but uh, not for very long, and it's currently working fine. So you don't, you don't, it doesn't keep you up at night that Twitter might go offline again? Uh, at this point, I think we've got a pretty good handle on, on what makes Twitter work. Um, and uh, we're, we're also doing it with uh, 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 two data centers instead of three. So we used to run, have three data centers, uh, we shut down one of them, so we we're uh, actually two-thirds of the roughly two thirds of the prior uh, compute capability. Uh, but we've made uh, so many improvements to the uh, core algorithm. In some cases, we've improved the um, uh, core algorithm by 80%. So the actual CPU usage or computer usage is dramatically less. Um, so, uh, but there's also people themselves. Uh, the system, despite being at all time highs of, of usage, is fast. It's responsive. It's more responsive than it was before, before the takeover. Uh, and we've also added uh, long form tweets, we've added, uh, you can now post videos up to two hours and two videos of any length. Um, we've, we're rolling out our subscriber program so, so people can, uh, content creators can uh, actually make a living on, on Twitter by having some of their content behind a paywall. Um, and um, we open source the algorithm so there's transparency about tweets get shown, what, you know, what, what, what content gets shown versus not. Um, I think you, you say, like, what are you really going to trust? Are you going to trust a, a, some sort of black box algorithm from some other site, or are you going to trust something that you can actually see and understand? But you, do you accept that there are lots of engineers that are, are looking at, at the way that Twitter is built and, and the, the lack of engineers, because so many have, have left, and are worried about the health of Twitter? Well, I mean, there have been um, many of these people have predicted that Twitter will cease to function. Their predictions have not turned out to be true. You know, insert Mark Twain you know, saying, you know, rumors about death are greatly exaggerated. Um, let's go back six months. And I mean, we're literally on Twitter right now. Right. It's about to work. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back six months and even further further back than that. When you put that initial bid in, you then had a wobble. You kind of said, I actually don't want to buy Twitter anymore. Um, oh, I mean, I mean, it really is quite entertaining. I mean, it's like soap opera. Uh, because uh, when I first made the offer, uh, the response was the, the uh, board adopted a poison pill. So they were like, hell no, you can't buy Twitter. We'd rather die. We'd like to chew on cyanide before being, being bought. That was their initial response. And then, <laughs> and then you said, and then you said, actually, I don't want to buy it. Because, <laughs> yes. So you and, and, then, it. And, and, then, and then they said, no, you must buy us. Gun to the head. You have to buy us. I'm like, are you the same people who said you'd rather die than, than be bored? Doesn't that seem odd? So I guess, my question, <laughs> I guess my question to you is, in terms of, you said that, you said that the reason was because of bots, because Twitter was filled with bots. Well, now, looking back yeah. at it now, was there a little bit of you that thought, actually, maybe I've overpaid. Actually, maybe I don't want to do this. I want, I want to get out of this. 
be honest. Yeah, no, no. The, the, the problem was that the um, uh, publicly stated user numbers were in excess of the real user numbers. Uh, so, um, but I, I've heard you talk about that. Yes, and you yes. can talk about that there in lots of But yes. basically, looking back at it now, was that the only reason that you wanted to pull out? Yes. That was literally the issue. It's like, it's like let's say you um, uh, buy a warehouse full of goods, uh, and you're told that uh, less than 5% of the goods in the warehouse are, uh, have, 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 are, are broken. You know? um, but then you actually get the warehouse, you look into the warehouse, and it turns out actually 25% of the things are broken. You'd be like, huh, that's, uh, that's not what you said. And then, <laughs> so then you changed your mind again and decided to buy it. Did well, you do that? Did you do that kind of because had to. You, right? Did you do that because you thought that a court would make you do that? Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is the reason. Right. So you were still trying to get out of it, and then you just were advised by lawyers, "Look, I ha you're going to have to, you're gonna, gonna have to buy this." Yes. Interesting. So you. Actually, <laughs> so yeah. You, so you. So you didn't. You didn't actually want to purchase it, even when you said you were going. You, well, you, you, that price. you were going to really. No, I mean, like, like let's say, like, I think the analogy is pretty, pretty close. Like, let's say, you know, it's, it's like you, there's a warehouse full of goods. Uh, they say the warehouse, uh, less than five percent of what's in the warehouse is broken. And then you look, at, you, you walk into the warehouse and say, actually, it's twenty five percent. So you, you know, you might still want to buy what's the in that warehouse, but probably at a lower price. You're not buying the stuff that's broken. So you, exactly. didn't, you didn't have an epiphany. You just thought, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to buy this. I might as well buy the bullet. Yeah. So then, you, <laughs> so then you walk. It's not in, super complicated. Right. Right. <laughs> I'm not sure you've said that before. Oh, fair enough. Um, so then you you came into Twitter. Q Q, Q Hobbit court case. <laughs> <laughs> you, you said this in the BBC interview. Oh, okay. uh, you, so you, you then came into Twitter with with a sink. What were your first impressions? <laughs> <laughs> well. I thought, wow, this is a really nice office building. Uh, and uh, Expensive. Yes, a very expensive office building. Um, great decor. It's a lovely place. Um, and um, I mean, and, and definitely is, is spending money like it's going out of fashion, uh, which is, it isn't quite going out of fashion yet. Um, so. No, I mean, I, I, the gravity of the situation is perhaps uh, not well understood. Of, of um, at, you know, at the point at which uh, the company, the, the transaction closed, uh, Twitter was tracking to uh, lose uh, over three billion dollars a year. Um, so, uh, and had one billion in the bank. So that's four months to death. So this is your starting position. Uh, how would you feel? Pretty tense, you know. You also had to borrow quite a lot of money and pay interest on that too. Well, that's why part of why it was a three billion dollar uh, run rate. So, um, if, in, in rough numbers, a normal year Twitter would do say let's say four and a half billion in revenue, four and a half billion dollars in, in cost. Um, I mean, it was really kind of like a non-profit. <laughs> They'd run it at roughly roughly break even. Now, but that's not a bank. That's not bankruptcy. You're not saving that no. company from bankruptcy. No, it's breaking even. But but then then the issue is that um, if you then add a billion and a half dollars in debt servicing, um, and have a massive drop in revenue, which we did, um, which was partly cyclic and partly you know political concerns or whatever. Um, so revenue, you know, call it dropped by over a third. It's not and, and this is not just Twitter. Uh, you know, Facebook and Google also seen some significant uh, advertising revenue declines. It was, it was a little. It's been a little higher at Twitter, but uh, most of the advertisers are coming back. So I think we'll just we'll be back where there's a cyclic demand uh, drop, which is still pretty significant. Um, but but in, in rough numbers, uh, revenue dropped from four and a half billion to three, um, uh, and um, expenses went from four and a half to six, creating a three billion dollar negative cash flow situation, um, and Twitter having a billion dollars in the bank. That's four months to live. So unless drastic action was taken immediately, this company's going to die. And beyond well, that, let's, let's talk about that drastic action because almost immediately, um, you sacked a lot of Twitter workers. Um, yeah, and, and, and look, I, I spoke to them. It's very easy to speak to them. 
uh, when it happened. And, and, and the way they said, pretty much everyone said, is, is that it felt quite haphazard. It was. And it felt a little bit uncaring. Do you, do you, do uh, do I wouldn't you say uncaring. The, 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 you know, the issue is like, uh, the, the companies think are going to go bankrupt, uh, or if, if we do not cut costs immediately. Um, this is not a, a caring, uncaring situation. It's like if all ship sinks, then nobody's going to drop. Right. Yeah. But, but a, a lot of people just lost their jobs like that, um, and 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 they went. Well, what, they didn't what, even know they were they they lost their jobs often. They just, okay. were just they were just so frozen out of you, their accounts. What would you do? Well, you might want to give someone some notice. I mean, you might. It's by the way, I, I'm not running Twitter, but, no, no, but this is this is the criticism, and this is what actual this is what I staff members but, say. A but, little bit of notice. Uh, you know. No, I understand. You have four months to live, 120 days. In 120 days, you're dead. So how? So what do you want to do? How much are you worth? I don't know. But you, I mean, we're talking about around the $200 billion mark. I mean, it's not yeah. quite, you're framing it in, in a way that, that you know, that it had a, had a few months to live. You're quite a rich man. Um, I sold a, a lot of Tesla stock to close this deal. I, just, I did not want to sell the Tesla stock. Okay. Um, do, you, do you have any regrets on the way that some of the staff were let go? Uh, I mean, who were given, you know, three months of severance, some cases more. So, um, but, you know, we're, we're, like I said, the, the companies need to run on their own cognizance. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, not, it's not so easy for me to sell stock, as people might think. I have to sell stock during certain periods. I can't sell stock during other periods. Um, so there's only there are only brief windows where I can sell Tesla stock, and then this is often taken as some lack of faith in Tesla. And in fact, the the, the Tesla stock sales caused the Tesla stock to plummet, uh, which is not good. Do you think those two were connected? Well, the the, the people couldn't, couldn't parse the difference between I'm selling Tesla stock because I have, I've lost faith in Tesla, which I haven't, or that it's desperately needed for Twitter. Um, okay, and then after that, after um, you um, let go of a lot of stuff, obviously Twitter became slimmed down a lot, and then you started making some more policy decisions. One of those policy decisions was to bring Donald Trump back. He hasn't actually tweeted yet. Right. Uh, do you expect him to come back at any point? Like, have you have you spoken to him? I don't. He may or may not come back. Uh, the, but the, but the point is that uh, Twitter should be uh, a town square that, that is, uh, gives uh, equal voice to you know, the, the whole country and ideally the whole world. Um, it should not be a partisan politics, uh, you know, and, and the more of a partisan politics that are on the very far left of the spectrum, San Francisco Berkeley politics, normally is quite niche. Um, but it, it was Twitter effectively acted as a megaphone for a very niche regional politics and, and, and megaphone that to the world. So if, in order for something to serve as a digital town square, it must uh, you know, serve all people from all political persuasions, uh, provided it's legal. Um, so you know, close to half the country uh, voted for Trump. I wasn't one of them. I voted for Biden. Um, but nonetheless, uh, you know, free speech is meaningless unless you allow people uh, you don't like to say things you don't like. Otherwise, it's irrelevant. Um, and if at the point at which you lose uh, free speech, uh, it doesn't come back. I, th I think the issue some people have is that a lot of people were brought back. I mean, some people were brought back who uh, were previously banned for spreading things like uh, QAnon conspiracies. You have people like Andrew Tate who were brought back who were previously uh, banned for things like hate speech. Do you think you prioritize freedom of, of speech over misinformation and hate speech? Well, you know, who's to say that something is misinformation? Um, who is the arbiter of that? Is it the BBC? Yeah, you're literally, literally asking me. Yeah. Well, no, you, be, you, are the, the you are the arbiter on Twitter because you own Twitter. Yes, I'm saying who, who is to say that one person's misinformation is another person's information? Um, at the point at which you, you say that there is, uh, this is misinformation. Like, who is but going you, but to you accept that misinformation that? can be dangerous, that it can cause real-world yes. harms, that it can 
potentially cause them. Yeah, so the point I'm trying to make is that the BBC itself has, at times, published things that are false. Do you agree that that has occurred? I, 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 I'm quite sure the BBC have uh, said things before that turn out to not be true. Correct. In, in its, whatever it is, 100 year history, I'm quite yes. sure. Even if you aspire to be accurate, there are times when you, you, you will not be. Right, but and I, think, has, I that, think in the but, grand scheme of things, accept, the BBC does, does aspire to be accurate. But you accept there has to be a line in terms of hate speech. I mean, not, you're not looking at total 100% unrestricted speech. Um, there's, well, I mean, I generally am of the opinion that if, if, uh, if, you, if, if the people of a given country are against a certain type of speech, they should talk to their elected representatives and pass a law to prevent it. So, for example, you, you cannot advocate murdering someone. That's illegal in the United States. Everywhere, really, I suspect. Um, so, uh, so there are limits to speech. Um, I mean, I, I guess taking your argument to a logical conclusion, then, do you accept that there's more misinformation on the platform if it's not being policed in the same way? I, I actually think there's, there's there's less these days because we we've eliminated so many of the bots which were pushing scams and spam. Uh, and previously, previous management turned a blind eye to to the bots because their bonuses were tied to user growth. And if you vote, if, if you if your competition is tied to user growth, uh, well, you're not going to look too closely at some of the users. That's part of the problem. So I think we've got less misinformation because we've we don't have the bot problem that we used to do. Um, and we also have um, given a lot of attention to community notes, uh, which corrects, uh, where the community itself corrects misinformation. Uh, it's been very effective. Um, I, I mean, I would, I would only just add that, you know, we have spoken to people who, who have been sacked that used to be in content moderation. And, and, and pe we've spoken to people very recently who were involved in moderation. And they just say, they just there's not enough people to police this stuff, particularly around um, particularly around hate speech um, in the company. Do, is that well, something that you want to address? Talking about? I mean, you use Twitter. Right. Do you see a rise in hate speech? I mean, I, I, but just a personal anecdote. Like, what do you do? I don't. P personally, my, uh, for you, I would see I get, I get more of that kind of content, yeah, personally. But I, I'm not going talk to talk to the rest of, for, for the rest of Twitter. So you but see more hate speech personally? I would say I would see more hateful content in that. In that Content moment. you don't like or or hateful. What do you mean to describe a hateful thing? Yeah, I mean you know just content that will solicit a, a reaction, something that may include something that is slightly racist or slightly sexist. Those kinds of those kinds of things. So you think if I'm, something is slightly sexist, it should be banned? I, no, is I'm that not. What you're I'm not saying anything. I'm well, saying. I'm just curious. What you, I'm, just, I'm trying to say what you mean by hateful con content. And I'm asking for specific examples, um, and if. And you just said that if something is slightly sexist, that's hateful content. Does that mean that it should be banned? Well, you've asked me. You've asked me whether my feed, whether it's got less or more. It, I'd say it's got slightly more. That's what I'm asking for examples. Can right? You, can you name one example? I, I honestly don't. You I, I, honestly, you I don't can't name I, a single example. I'll tell you why. Because I don't actually use that for you feed anymore because I, I just don't particularly like it. And actually a lot of people a lot of people are quite similar. I, I, I only well, well, I only look well, at my, my followers. You said you've following. seen more hateful content but you can't name a single example. Not even one. I'm not sure I've used that feed for the last three or four weeks. And I, well, I how did you not. see the hateful content content? Because I've been I've been using I've been using Twitter since you've taken it over for the last six months. Okay, so then you must have at some point seen the you for you hateful content. I'm asking you for one example. Right. And and I, you can't I, give us a more. And, 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 and I'm saying I, I, then I, I say so that you don't know what you're talking about. Really? Yes, because you can't give me a single example of hateful con of content, not even one tweet, and yet you claimed that the hateful content was high. Well, that's a false. No, what I claimed. You just lied. What? No, no. What I claimed was. Uh, there are many uh, organizations that say that that kind of information is on the rise. Now, whether whether it has on my feed or example. not, I mean, I, right, and you can, can look at something one. like the, the uh, Strategic Dialogue uh, Institute in the, in the UK. They will say that. So you, they, look, it's, people will say all sorts of nonsense. I'm literally asking for a right. single example, and you can't name one. Right, and as, as I've already said, I don't use that feed. But let's, well, how let, do you know? But I don't you, think this is getting anywhere. You literally said you experience more hateful content and then couldn't name a single example. Right, and as I said, I, That's haven't, absurd. I, haven't, I haven't actually looked at that feed. Then how would you know this hateful content? Because I'm saying that's what I saw a few weeks ago. I can't give you an exact example. Let's move on. We, have, we only have a certain amount of time. 
Um, wow. COVID misinformation. You change, the COVID, you change the COVID misinformation. Has rules. BBC changed its COVID misinformation? The BBC does not set the rules on Twitter, so I'm asking you. No, I'm talking about the BBC's misinformation about COVID. I'm, I'm, I'm literally Has asking you about, you change the labels, the COVID misinformation labels. There used to be a policy, and then it then disappeared. Why, why do that? COVID is no longer uh, an issue. Does the BBC uh, hold itself at all responsible for misinformation re regarding ma masking and, and side effects of vaccinations and not reporting on that at all? And what about the fact that the BBC was put under pressure by the British government to change its editorial policy? Are you aware of that? This is, a, a, this is not an interview about the BBC. Oh, so. you thought it wasn't? <laughs> I, this, I see now why you've done Twitter Spaces. I am not a representative of the BBC's editorial policy. I want to make that clear. Let's talk about something else. You want to talk about the BBC? All right, let's, 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 talk about, let's talk about something else. You weren't expecting that. Let's talk about something else. Narendra Modi. The BBC did a documentary um, about uh, Narendra Modi and his leadership during the uh, riots in Gujarat. Um, we then believe that some of those, some of that content was taken off Twitter. Was that at the behest of the Indian government? I'm not aware of that particular situation. So you're, you're just, you're not sure? I, I, I don't know if, I, I don't know about that, that, you know, what exactly happened with some content situation in India. The, <clears throat> the, the rules in India for, for what uh, can appear on social media are quite strict. And we can't go beyond the laws of a country. But do, but do you get that if you do that, you incentivize countries around the world to simply pass more draconian laws? No. Uh, we, look, what, if, if we have a choice of either our people go to prison uh, or we comply with the laws, we will comply with the laws. The same goes for the BBC. Okay, okay. Um, since you uh, became CEO, there's been another story in town. No, no, I, 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 I'm not CEO anymore. Okay, you're, you're Chief Twit, or what are you? No, I, my, my dog, Floki, is the CEO. Okay. Um, He's taken over. I, I, I saw that. Yeah. Um, okay, so, so TikTok has also been in the news. There's talk of perhaps the Biden administration wanting to potentially ban it or, or, or force a sale. What, what's your view of the situation? I don't really use TikTok. Um, I mean, one of the reasons that I emphasize that the uh, uh, that our goal here at Twitter is to maximize uh, unregretted user minutes or unregretted user time is that I hear many people tell me they spent a lot of time on TikTok, but they regret the time spent. And that seems like, okay, well, we don't want to have regretted time. We want the time to be unregretted, where you learned things, uh, you were entertained, amused. Um, I mean, frankly, I, I, you know, I, I I get uh, more uh, laps out of Twitter than anything else, and many people tell me the same thing. So that's a good sign. Um, for, for, for TikTok itself, like I said, I just don't know enough about what's going on there. Um, I can't say I have a strong opinion on TikTok. So you, so you do have an opinion on, on whether it should be banned or not? You know, I'm generally... Uh, against banning things. Um, so I, I'd probably not be in favor. I mean, it would, it would help Twitter, I suppose, if TikTok was banned, uh, because then people would spend more time on Twitter and less time on TikTok. But even though that would be, that, even if it would help Twitter, I would be generally against uh, banning of, of things. OK. Um. Do you feel sometimes that your many business interests might get in the way of you having opinion? I mean, for example, Tesla has major connections in China. Do you, 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 wouldn't, you, wouldn't, have a, you wouldn't have a certain opinion on something or feel uncomfortable about saying something because of your other business interests elsewhere? Do I look uncomfortable? Which I do, I look uncomfortable. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, look, Tesla's got activities around the world and so does SpaceX. Um, you know, once in a while, those things do, do come into conflict. Um, 
but it's not like Twitter is like uh, you know operates in China. It doesn't the choice banned in China? So, um, and I certainly have I perceived no no communication whatsoever from the Chinese government with regard to Twitter. Okay. Um, in terms of advertising, obviously it's, the Twitter's not a private company anymore, so we don't really know how, how, it's, how it's all going. Have all the advertisers come back? Uh, not all, but most. And it, it, you can see it for yourself on Twitter, even in the For You feed. Right. I mean, in the, sorry, following. In the following feed. I'm not used for you, because it's not. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little um, hate speech, I'm told. Um, that's not what I said. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, well, why don't you use For You? What's wrong with it? Um, how is it going? Is, is Twitter in profit now? No, Twitter is uh, uh, rough. I say we're, we're roughly break even at this point. And I think you've said before you, you see a you see a world where you could be in profit. Is there a timeline on that? Do you think? I mean, I, depending on how things go, if current trends continue, I think we could be profitable. Or I mean, pro, pro, I say to, to be more precise, we could be cash flow positive. Uh, this quarter, if things keep going well. This quarter, as soon as that? I, I possibly, yeah. Wow. Um, and do you have a message for the advertiser? I mean, can you say which advertisers haven't come back? Um, I think I think almost all of them have either come back or said they're going to come back. There are very few exceptions. <laughs> can you say, say any of the exceptions? Um, I actually don't know of anyone who said definitively they're not coming back. They're all sort of training towards coming back. But there are some that just I mean, jump in, the water's warm, it's great. That's, that's your message to the, to the advertisers who haven't come back? Yeah, I mean, look, uh, you know, if, 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 if somebody feels comfortable um, advertising their children's movies and Apple feels comfortable advertising iPhones, those are good indicators that Twitter is um, a good place to advertise. Um, I want to talk about if you have any regret, regrets, and, and you know, I think you, you were booed at a Dave Chappelle concert. I think your own lawyer a said little. a little, a little. Well, some say a little, some say a bit more. Um, I think your own lawyer said you couldn't get a fair trial in San Francisco because there are lots of people that, that don't necessarily like you here. Yeah, but the, I, you know, I have you, to say I, I was wrong. He was wrong, I guess, the, uh, because um, I was acquitted uh, by the San Francisco jury unanimously. So, yeah. But, but I guess, but look, do, yeah, do, no, do, no. do you have any regrets about buying Twitter? Um, I think it was something that uh, needed to be done. Um, I mean, you said it, you, you it, said it's quite you, difficult, you know. It's, uh, I'd say the, like, the, the pain level of Twitter has been extremely high. Um, this hasn't been some sort of party. Um, so, uh, it's been really quite a stressful situation, uh, you know, for the last several months. Not not an easy one. I, I, uh, I was, but apart from the pain, I mean, so it's been quite painful. Um, but I think uh, at the end of the day, it, it should have been done. I think that I, were there many mistakes made along the way? Of course, I'm, you know. Um, and uh, but uh, you know, all's well that ends well. And so I, I, I feel like uh, we're headed uh, to a good place. Um, you know, we're roughly break even. I think we're trending towards being cash flow positive very soon, like literally in a matter of, of, of months. Um, the advertisers are returning. Um, the, I think the quality of recommended tweets has improved significantly. We've taken a lot of feedback from uh, people that have looked at the open source recommendation algorithm, and we've, we've made a lot of improvements even, to, even since that was uh, made open source, and we're going to keep doing that. So. Overall, I think the trend is uh, very good. So, uh, you know, I mean, it was actually something I was going to ask you. You mentioned the pain, but, but you actually tweeted. Uh, I think in February, you said the the last three months have been extremely tough. I wouldn't wish that pain on anyone. Could, are you talking emotionally? There, I mean, yeah. can you can you can you explain? I wasn't stabbed, right? Right, right. Like but some people around here, it's just dangerous. Take the woods, right? It is. It can be. But just can you just talk me through the emotional strain of this? Yeah, I mean, look, I'm under, I've been under constant attack. I mean, uh, it's not like I, you know, have a stone cold heart or something like that. You know, uh, if, if 
you're under constant criticism and attack, it's, and then that, that gets fed to you nonstop, including through Twitter, um, that uh, it's rough, you know? Um, now, now, at the end of the day, I kind of think that, like, if you do lose your feedback loop, that's, that's actually not good. Um, so, uh, you know, if, if, so I think it's, it is actually important to get negative feedback. Um, I don't turn replies all, and I actually got rid of, I, I removed my entire block list. So I don't block anyone either. Um, so, so somebody can, you know, so, so I get like <laughs> a lot of negative feedback. Um, what, what's been, what's been your... good to get negative feedback? You know? Right. Um, is it, when you talk about the, the emotional strain, you've gone back to feedback. Is, it, is that the thing that's been most difficult to take, the sort of negative feedback? Yeah, I mean, if, if, uh, if the media is writing non-stop stories about why you're a horrible person, I mean, you know, um, it's, it's uh, hurtful, obviously. <laughs> Do you, I'm, I'm interested. I, 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 I've written down a lot of these questions, but, but I haven't written this one down. But it's interesting. It feels like you have quite a kind of interesting relationship with the media, because in, in some ways you're quite skeptical, quite critical, certainly, of, of established media. But also you, you kind of get hurt by what the media writes, and um, you seem yeah, to... So really you obviously, I, do you get your news still from the BBC, as you've already said? So I literally do, follow do you, the BBC right, on right. Twitter. So, so do, do, do you feel you have a kind of, kind of odd relationship with the media? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, explain. No, it's, it, 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 it is somewhat of a love-hate relationship, although, I mean, it, it might be tilted more towards the hate. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Uh, you know, it, it, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I think this, this, this is a sort of part and parcel of having a, a, a free media situation, which is that, um, you know, I do, I do, I do take uh, part in, in, in that the media is actually able to trash me on a regular basis uh, in, you know, in the United States and the UK and whatnot. Um, Whereas, you know, in a lot of other places, uh, you, you media cannot say uh, mean things to powerful people. Okay. But I think it's better that we have a, a situation where the media can say uh, mean things to powerful people. If we're talking about the media, let's talk about verification labels. You obviously want to create another revenue stream that's subscription-based. Is verification the way to do that? Because if we have a kind of a situation at the moment where the New York Times doesn't have a verified badge, whereas well, anyone else who can pay the, whatever few few bucks a, a month yeah. can is that can that be right? Is that what you envisaged when you bought Twitter? I, I must confess to some delight in removing the verified badge from the New York Times. That was that was great. Um, anyway, they're they're still alive and well, so uh, they're they're doing fine. But, but on um, a serious note, it could flame. Disinformation again. If you have verified accounts that uh, are from anyone who can pay money, they simply they go up to potentially uh, the top of feeds. Um, they get more action on Twitter, and uh, traditional media that may not pay for uh, verification doesn't. Do you see how that could potentially be a driver of misinformation? Well, I mean, I, I, I think the media is a driver of misinformation much more than the media would like to admit that they are. Um, I mean, that's a different question. Yeah. Um, but you are sort of saying like, like who who knows best, the average citizen or you know, uh, someone who, who is a journalist. Um, and I think in a lot of cases, um, it is the average citizen that knows more than, than the journalist. In fact, I mean, very often when I see an article about some uh, something that I know a lot about, and I, I read the article, and it's like that they get a lot wrong, um, and uh, you know. So the best interpretation is there is someone who doesn't really understand what's going on in the industry, has only a few facts to play with, has to come up with an article. Now, it's going to be, you know, it's not going to, it's not going to hit the bullseye. Um, uh, so, so then, like, generally, this is what, how I explain to this to other people. If, if, if you read an article about something you know about, how much of that, how accurate is that article? Now, imagine that that is, the, that is how all, essentially all articles are. They, they're, they're an approximation of what's going on, but, but not in a, not an exact uh, situation. So if somebody is actually, let's say, uh, in the fray, or the, like an expert in the field, and 
uh, was actually there, and then and writes about their experience of being actually there. I, I think that actually that that could, that's uh, in a lot of cases going to be better than than a journalist because the journalist wasn't there. I think you said the legacy verified blue ticks are going to go next week. Uh, there have been a few a few deadlines on four, this. Four, four twenty. Yeah, I, I, I see the joke. Um, the, the is it definitely going to happen? The number will never leave me. I, I, I clearly. Yeah, uh, general, it cost, it cost you a lot of money. Well, fortunately, it didn't in the trial. Well, yeah, right, but the, the SEC, right? Yes, we're going to ask for a refund. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's move on from that. <laughs> but blue ticks, in theory, all legacy blue ticks gone, gone, gone next week. And this is, and at that point, you'll kind of work out whether this is going to sink or swim. Yes. What's your What's your hunch? I mean, you've obviously. I think it's going to swim. Yeah. Yeah. It'll swim just fine. Okay. What are you looking for in terms of uh, in terms of a revenue stream on that? What are your goals? Well, I, I don't think it's like necessarily a giant revenue stream. Um, you know, cause even if you have, if you have sort of a million uh, people that are subscribed for let's say a hundred dollars a year ish. That's a uh, hundred million dollars, um, and uh, that's that's a that's a fairly small revenue stream relative to advertising. Um, what what we're, all we're really trying to do here with uh, verification is to massively raise the cost of disinformation and and, and bots in general. Um, so my prediction is that any social media company that does not uh, insist on paid verification will simply be overwhelmed. Uh, by uh, advanced AI bots. I mean, ChatGPT is essentially a, a zillion instances of ChatGPT. How would is you that even really know? what you want on the platform? Do you want big news organizations being overwhelmed by bots so that they have to pay no, you the some money? No, the point is that you, you won't be. If you pay. But a lot of organizations have already said they're not going to pay, like the New York Times. Well, then, you know, that's up to them if they, you know, can make them pay. Um, it's a small amount of money, so I don't know what, what their problem is. Um, so, uh, but uh, we're going to treat everyone equally. So w what we're not going to do is say that there's some anointed class uh, of journalists who are the special ones who get to tell everyone what, they're, what, should, what, they, what they should think. That it, it should be up to the people what they think. Um, and even if an article is completely accurate and um, comprehensive and everything, there's still in in writing that article, the media is choosing the narrative. They're, they're deciding what to write an article about. Um, so I'm hopeful that, the, that this can be more a case of the public choosing the narrative as opposed to the media choosing the narrative. But the media can choose narrative, at least, at least a combination of the media and the public choosing the narrative. Um, and the, the public getting to, to weigh in on stories if they, if they think there's, they should add something to it or uh, got something wrong. And over time, I think if Twitter is the best source of truth, it will succeed. And if, and if we are not the best source of truth, we will fail. Someone comes in and, and offers you $44 billion for Twitter right now. Would you take it? No. Would you consider it? No. Why? Uh, well, I, I, I think about it. It depends on who. I suppose if, if I was confident that they would pursue, that would, they, they would rigorously pursue the truth, um, then, I, then I, I, guess, I guess I would be glad to hand it off to someone else. I don't care about the money, really, but I, I, I do want to have some source of truth that I can count on. Um, and and I, I hope that's our aspiration with Twitter, is to have you know, a source of truth that you can count on. Uh, that's, that's, it's also real time. It's an, an immediate source of truth that you can count on and that gets more accurate with time as people comment on particular things. Well, if you don't care about the money, you could just give it to someone that you, that you think is uh, a good person to run Twitter. So who do you think that might be? I, I, I'm not the okay. boss of Twitter. No, but it's Well, that's, you might still have an idea. Who, who could run Twitter? Yeah. I, I, honestly, I have no idea who could run Twitter. Yeah, it's a hard job. Okay, let's. Let, I mean, let's move on to. You said that you were going to um, stand down as I really chief executive, right? Okay. I, have I, you, I can have, tell you, I'm, have, I'm not the CEO of Twitter. My dog is the CEO of Twitter. Okay. Have you got? <laughs> have you got any? It's a great dog. 
Other than the dog. Very alert and it's hard to put, get anything by him. Okay, that's good to know. Other yeah. than the dog, have you got any successes well, in mind? He, you've got a black a total turtleneck. What more do you need? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We're going down that, that, that route. Um, <laughs> Steve Jobs or Elizabeth Holmes? Are you making reference to? Uh, I guess more Elizabeth Holmes. Okay. <laughs> I've forgotten the question now. He's got a husky voice. <laughs> and a black toy. Um, Problem solved. What were we talking about there? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, who would who, who would you want? Have you got a successor in mind? I'm not yet. Hopefully, at some point. Right. So, because you did say you were going to stand down. I did stand down. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's move on from that then. All right. What about this office? I'm intrigued about this office. You you said it was ex even expensive. I don't really need to see you. Yeah. Yeah. Why can't we be um, an anarcho-syndicalist uh, commune? I think Jack Dorsey kind of recommended oh, us yeah, doing true, that and true. kind of ignored it. Yeah, it was kind of bad, actually. Mm. Um, this office, are you thinking about moving out of San Francisco? Uh, not yet. Not yet? Not yet. No, I mean, this place is nice, and uh, we, we, you know, I kind of like this office building, actually. Yeah. Okay, so you're not, because I know you've talked about there's been high levels of crime here. You, you actually said at one yeah, point you thought... we should do something about the crime. Right. You've also People are dying. Right. <laughs> we should take action. You've also talked about how potentially, I think you might have been joking, but you could turn us into a homeless shelter. So the, yes. the, I guess the reason I'm asking is, you know, you've... you've if we tried to turn it into a homeless shelter in the bullying, the bullying match, but the bullying owner rejected it. You, you tried to... Yeah, they won't let us. Which bits, no, which bits have you tried to turn into a homeless well, shelter? We're only using one of the buildings, and so the other building could be a homeless shelter. And you've tried to... Yeah, to... we would like to do it right now. Really? Yes. And no, they, you're being they, stopped by who? By, by the building owner. They won't let you? No. In fact, they wouldn't even let us take the W off the sign. So how were you going to do that? We were quite, quite uh, you know... What was, your, what was your plan for the shelter? I don't know. We could just let people stay there. It's nice. Right. Okay. I, I didn't they know bring, that. They can, they can bring their stuff, bring the tent, whatever. Right. And it's a roof over their head. Yeah. If the building owner lets us, we'll do it. Yeah? So if the building only let, owner lets you, you would, you would happily do that? Yes. Okay. All right. There we go. Um, what's the most difficult thing you've had to do? What's the hardest thing you've had to do? In my whole life? Or In the last six months. Uh, we're, talking about, <laughs> we're talking about the last six months as you as Twitter boss here. Twitter owners. Um, well, shutting down uh, our one of our service centers was was quite difficult because it turns out there were um, I, I thought the service centers were redundant, uh, but uh, there were in fact a lot of things that were hard coded to this one service center, and so when we shut it down, we actually uh, it was quite catastrophic. We lost a lot of functionality, and so sort of really rushed to put it back. When was that? And that was around late December, Jan early January. So that that was the biggest sort of I'm I'm worried here. Big, biggest crisis, yeah, yeah. And what about hard in terms of emotional? I mean, I mean, is letting go. I mean, what what were the current the step the levels of staff and what are they now? Um, I think we're um, around fifteen hundred people at this point, and there was I think seventy eight hundred. What was, it, what was that? So I, I think it was around just under eight thousand. Eight thousand fifteen hundred right now. Okay, and it, has it been hard letting that, that many people go? Yeah, not fun at all. It's painful. I mean, I guess in in what way do you do you feel like you need to speak to people when they when when they leave? Or I mean, it's not physically possible to speak to that many people. Mm. Has, has that, I mean, you talked about that being the most technical bit. Is that, has, has that been sort of the hardest thing emotionally or is, is it? Is it's it, one of the hardest things, certainly. Yeah. yeah. Um, the Nancy Pelosi tweet. <laughs> Go oh, right back to the start. <laughs> but there have been, that is an example of a few, and there have been others. Um, that, do, do you feel like you're an impulsive person? I mean, have I shot myself in the foot with tweets multiple times? Yes. Do, do you feel like... <laughs> I need but bulletproof shoes at this point. You've I mean, you've definitely done that. The issue is that you're now a Twitter owner. Do you, do you feel like you should be, look at your tweets more? You have more a higher responsibility when you tweet something out for it to be accurate? I think I should not tweet 
uh, after 3 a.m. That's the rule. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe 2 a.m. That's the new rule. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so there's a blanket ban. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Uh, what are your Twitter rules? What are your Twitter rules? I mean, I've, I've had some people say, never tweet when you've been drinking or never tweet when angry. What are your Twitter rules? Well, I think those are two good rules. Yeah, don't tweet if you're wasted um, and, uh, or, or, you know, really upset about something. Um, yeah. Uh, pro probably, uh, I mean, a good friend of mine um, ha actually had a good suggestion and it has helped, uh, which is that uh, if you're going to tweet something that uh, maybe is controversial, uh, save it as a draft and look at it the next day and see if you still want to tweet it. And that has been a good rule of thumb. Okay. So I've got a bunch of things in my draft folder that I'm glad I didn't send. Um, I can't remember whether I've asked you this. This is my sort of sort of wrapping up at this point. But yeah, do you do you have any regrets? Uh, I, I mean, I did, what was like hindsight's twenty twenty. So the, you know, a uh, bunch of decisions that can be made better for sure. Um, but um, as I said, all's well that ends well. Um, I think it's going pretty well. So uh, in the grand scheme of things, I, I can't complain. Okay. Um, I'm going to just check my my list of things to make sure I've actually. Asked I mean, it's maybe this is something that people on the on the <laughs> Twitter want to say. Ask, you know, we could ask them. Um, that's on you. That's on you. I'm, wow, there's 680,000 people listening. There you go. That's a lot. That is a lot. Uh, let's see. How do we see? Okay, let me see. Who, I'll I'll just look at my my tweet and uh, see what people are saying or what questions they have. Um. <laughs> do you like the BBC? Do you like BBC? Okay, yeah, we're not going to do this. <laughs> oh, I can't interview you. I work for the BBC. So well, like BBC. You like, do you like BBC? I know. I see what you're doing. I'm not going to respond to that. Okay. <laughs> I think we can finish the interview there. If you want to, if you want to continue, thank you very much. Well, you know, well come on. This, yeah, I really appreciate so it. What, sure you like BBC. Come on. Um, I'm not engaging. <laughs> All right, Elon. It honestly has been a pleasure okay. talking to you. Well, it really has. And if um, you want to, if you want to carry on answering questions on 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 this, then, then go for it. But I'm not. I'm not going to. Okay. Well, I'm just trying to figure, see if there's like any you know good. There's a lot of comments here. Um, I can imagine. Um, there's so many. Uh, Anyway, so it, it, it's it's nice to be interviewed by the BBC. I have a lot of respect for the British Broadcasting Corporation. Um, when did, did you say when the when the actual label is going to go public? Oh, <laughs> is it um, is it? Do we still say state media or whatever? Oh, it says government funded media currently, um, uh, as opposed to publicly funded media. Uh, well, I guess probably we can make that change tomorrow if you'd like. I it's. Uh, it's up to you. <laughs> it's up to you. But uh, I mean, okay, so we'll expect that tomorrow. I mean, do, do you have any requests on a personal level, or you can't speak on a personal level? No, I don't. Okay, okay. Yeah. I think we've established that. Um, Go on, what, 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 what questions are people asking you? Go on. Um, I mean, there's like a lot of comments. Uh, let's see. I'm just literally reading on, looking at replies to. That, you know the fact that I just the spaces. Um, are there any good questions that I've missed out in the last in the last six months? I'm sure there are many. Um, I mean, people generally seem to like this interview, from what yeah. I can tell. Um, very few negative comments, so generally positive. Is that is that um, that's probably bad for me? <laughs> if, if I'm, I'm, really just, I'm, I'm scrolling as fast as I can it. to sort of see. Uh, <laughs> I guess the, there's some complaints about Twitter Spaces being needing some improvement. Let's fix Twitter Spaces is one of the comments. Um, <laughs> people like the fact that my dog Floki is the CEO, um, and uh, I'm really just scrolling as fast as I can here. Um, I, I, I think my I, think, I guess my reflection on this on this interview. <laughs> I'd just like just, to say just, I like BBC. Okay, okay. You obviously find that very funny. <laughs> I do find it funny. Um, 
I, I, I think, I mean, honestly, if I, looking, listening to the interview, the, the answer about misinformation and saying, oh, we don't police misinformation in the same way, but we, we because, do, because we try and get bots, yeah. because we try and take down bots, we'll be effective at bots, we're, got, we're actually, there's actually less misinformation on the platform. I mean, no, I think that's I, a big factor. Like, Cause, cause, I'd like to ask, ask you one more question on that, because sure. I mean, a lot of people, I think, will be listening to this and sure. thinking, really? You're, you're, you're arguing you can police content moderation far less and end up with less misinformation. How, how, so, how first of all, we, uh, we do have uh, uh, you know, people in content moderation, so it's not like we don't. Um, so, uh, yeah, but many, but I've spoken to lots of people who've been, who've been fired, so lot, lots of people have been let go. I mean, You've gone from eight yeah. to fifteen. The censorship bureau was let go. Um, I don't think people, the, the the sort of putting a thumb on the political scales in the far left has been let go because that's not right. That's not what you want for a public a public square. Um, you know, you got to have equal treatment for people from um, across the political spectrum. So, um, you know, some of them are going to be upset about that. Um, but I, like I said, I, my, my my experience is that there's less 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 misinformation these days, not more, um, and that the community notes feature is extremely powerful for uh, addressing uh, so-called misinformation. Um, I mean, you've been you've had community notes placed on your own tweets. Yes, um, one of them involving a, an alleged diamond mine. Diamond mine. One, a mine that what I think it was mine? A, a mine that, that your father part owned. Yeah, my father never owned a uh, uh, <laughs> So you're thinking of an emerald, emerald mine. Emerald mine. Yeah, I'd like to see a picture of this alleged emerald mine. Because you've been, you've been community noted on that tweet. Yeah. Did you know that? No, but it's, he, he never owned an a, a, a emerald mine. This is total bullshit. Not even a 50% stake? No. Because in community notes. But first of all, okay. okay do, do you think emerald, do you think do you, something like an emerald mine would, would have like, um, you know, uh, some sort of property register? There'd be like a picture of it. It's not like you can say, oh, that's my mind. You know, they're, they're, these things are hotly debated. If you've got something valuable, um, you, you, you have to have some property record, like a house, but, but much more important than a house. And yet there is no property record whatsoever. There is no picture of this mind whatsoever. It doesn't exist. It's fake. So, that's, so it's a really good example then, because there is a community note on that tweet that says, you said this thing on the X day, blah, blah, blah. So in that instance, the community notes didn't work. So you're saying that that's a way of solving misinformation, but you're literally saying one of those community notes is wrong. It's in the community, community note may be referring to a thing where uh, I, I went on a trip with my father to Zambia, um, but I never saw any mine or anything. So there's no, it's, there's no mine. I'm not like, right, but at this point, I'm just saying the community notes says it is. So you're saying it's this big, great panacea, but yeah, it's literally on your own tweet, the community notes, uh, according to you, are wrong. Uh, if, if they're referencing um, an article, then the article may not be wrong, but they're still rep they're representing, you know, the uh, community notes is not going to be perfect, but I, the, it's the batting average of community notes I found to be extremely high. Right. Um, so, so community notes plus getting rid of millions and millions of bots every day. I guess that's that's what we're talking about. Yeah, that that that's what you think is tackling misinformation over over content moderation. And I think I think because I think that's the bit that a lot of people will go R really, really, yes, really. But look, the acid test is people will use the system and find it find it to be a good source of truth, or they don't. And no, no system is going to be perfect uh, in, in its uh, pursuit of the truth. Um, but I think, I think we can be the best, the least uh, inaccurate. That's our goal, the least inaccurate. And I think we, we I, I think we might be there already. If we're not there, we'll be there soon. Do you have, I've, I've spoken to people who think this. Do you, do you have a, a kind of message for people who, who think that Twitter has been ruined? Well, we have all-time high usage, so I don't think it has been. And, some, people, and, and, some people think it has been. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that. Yes, well, they're probably the same people who predicted that Twitter would, would cease to exist, and their predictions have turned out to be false. Okay. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to ask you whether you think it's been ruined, because obviously you're, you, you're not going to No, say I think it's right. Yes. That's way better. <laughs> um, better by a lot. I, I, I'm done with this interview. It sounds like you don't want to take any questions from your legions of fans. So, I mean, I was uh, looking for um, 
you know, questions. Uh, you got any questions? Yeah, here's the, okay. Okay, let's uh, let's hear from Doge Designer. <laughs> okay. So what I do? Cool. Is that the guy? Yeah, he's muted. We're just getting some technical help for anyone who's listening. Doge Designer's muted. Okay, so should I? How do you unmute? He just needs to. Okay. Those designer, if you if you unmute, you can talk. Hey, Lon, what's um, up? Can you hear me? Let, let's unmute uh, Jason and David as well. Uh, and and uh, I think there's and, a, and a definitely definitely Walter Isaacson if he does want to speak. I actually. I um, can bring up Alex too. Yeah, sure. Well, we'll get a few people going here. I thought we had um, half an hour for this interview. I know, it was so good, it's, we just supposed <laughs> to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I was told you were very pressed for time. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Right. Uh, Alex, you can speak. Hey, what's going on? Uh, Ooh, that goes. Yeah, what's it, yeah. uh, all right, that's better. Uh, so my question actually had to do with more privileges or features for long-term Twitter Blue subscribers. Uh, one of the complaints I hear a lot is people who change their just their profile picture and not their display name, um, how they lose their verification badge. Um, I know there's an ID verification coming up as well. What are your thoughts for expanding privileges for long time subscribers so they kind of gain trust with the platform where they might not have to uh, lose their blue check if they just change their profile picture as opposed to their name and profile picture yeah just uh, you know during this kind of uh, uh transition period uh we're um extra vigilant about uh, impersonation so i agree that over time if somebody is um, has a trusted track record. They should be able to change their their name and profile picture uh, without uh, losing the, the blue check. You know, during this transition period, uh, we want to be just like I said, extra vigilant against uh, impersonation. So um, that, that's that's why we're being so rigorous in this regard. Now, if somebody has um, organizational affiliation, they can change their name or picture uh, without losing the verification check. Uh, because they're cross-verified with their organization. Um, so I really would encourage people to get organizational verification um, as much as possible. And, um, and then we're going we're gonna to add, you know, so you can be, have multiple organizational affiliations. Um, I think this is going to be really powerful for avoiding impersonation. I've heard from a lot of people that impersonation is a, a serious issue, um, actually more on other platforms than, than Twitter. Uh, and I think that... Um, you know, if you can say that you you really do belong to, if, if the organization, it's, if some organization can say that, that you really do belong to them, that's a great way to address uh, impersonation risk. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Cool. Hey, Lon, can you hear me? I can, yes. How's it going? <laughs> good, how's it going? Oh, good. I'm flying to US tomorrow. I just have a couple of questions for you. One is like, I will be asked why you are here in like US. So what should I tell them? I am here to visit Twitter headquarters or just Twitter headquarters? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, would, I would recommend adding, adding the W uh, for the authorities. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. For sure, for sure. And second question <laughs> is like, will I be able to meet the Twitter CEO there or no? <laughs> uh, sure. Perfect. Can't wait. And I just have one message for James. Uh, like. You know the m number of people like you know in this Twitter space, so you should be responsible. Like you should be a responsible reporter. You are claiming that you are seeing a lot of hate speech, but you could not even give a single example. So I just request you to be a responsible speaker. That's it. All right. Th thank you. Um, thank you. So uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, David or Jason. I don't know if you guys can speak. Um, uh, you're welcome to if you'd like. I, I, I just want to clear up what, what I said there. I, I, 
you said you said has has your I believe you said something like has your feed I got no, I more said, hateful or something and I said my for you feed has got a bit more hateful I didn't say I was seeing tons of hate speech on it that's not what I said no but, yeah. but you can I mean you can frame it like that well look it's sure recorded so you know uh, it's not like uh, we you know we don't have to like engage in guesswork care it's recorded. In, in um, terms of your for you feed, are you, are you just trying? You're trying to get as many videos that are viral to to people as possible to to get people to stay on the platform. Is that is that the is that? Well, I think if we keep people entertained, then they're gonna keep, they're gonna yeah. I mean, if, if if we're entertaining and informing people, then they're gonna stay on the platform. Uh, obviously, I mean, it's, if if we bore people or it's like you know somehow un uninteresting, then they they will leave. Um, yeah, there has been this talk that um, that people like you and, and other senior celebrities, uh, some journalists, get favorable treatment on the algorithms. Well, you get a favorable treatment right now. <laughs> Do you give yourself a favorable treatment on the algorithm? No. no, in fact, the algorithm is uh, is open sourced, uh, so you can see exactly what's going on. I believe the feed, the for you one is open sourced. Is that right? Well, following is just who you follow. It's pretty. Right. Yeah, it's no algorithm. It's just. There's still an algorithm. Yeah, there's still an algorithm. Uh, what you see, you don't see every single. No, yeah, it, in in following, you should see all the tweets of people that you follow. If if not, there's a bug in the system. Right. Just just sequentially. When they tweet. Yeah. Yeah, following is literally the thing they say when they say it. There's no. There shouldn't be any algorithmic uh, interaction there. Um, so. Um. Oh, it's, it's, it's hard to actually see. I was gonna, hmm. Well, we, I, I definitely see some room for improvement from a functionality standpoint. Uh, because when you have a really big spaces, it's hard to see who. It's actually hard to even see who's um, requesting to speak because there's so many. You can add there, but there are people that request right here. Okay, it's a long, it's a long list. Max, like 60, I think. Oh, okay. At a time. I've got a, I've got a question here. Someone's texted me. Okay. What about Elon Jet? Uh, what about him? That was obviously quite a controversial moment when I think you, I think you, did you ban his account for, for a while? And then said yeah, you could only you couldn't lie because he was doxing you. Yeah, real time uh, doxing of locations is was that, not okay. Is that flexing your muscle overly? I mean, no, it's just a uh, real time doxing is not not allowed. Because uh, if I take a picture of someone in the street and then tweet it, is that doxing? Uh, if it's against their will and you're you're sort of following them around, then yeah, that would be doxing. But Elon Jet wasn't. Wasn't following you around, just using publicly available information, wasn't he? Um, I mean, it, it, I no, mean, it wasn't. He, he actually. The, the I, I thing know there's, I know there's this is actually not true. I know there's debate about that. Mr. But, but, Mato, it's, it's, you, yeah, he was using non public information you, combined with uh, with public information. Do you, Do you think that you, you you sort of gave yourself favorable treatment there? I mean, that's, that that's the criticism on that. That no, uh, it's just real time doxing is is not allowed. But that wasn't. Right, but that wasn't you. You literally created that rule after that. Actually, no. It, it just was you, I, I, unevenly I, enforced. Right. So there's a no doxing rule. It was unevenly enforced. In, in fact, in general, the, part of the it, issue with the prior management of Twitter is they they have all these rules, but they'd only enforce them against right. some people and not against others. You know what doxing generally means, which is revealing someone's address. Yes. So where they are. Right, but as I say, taking a picture is revealing some, where someone is. Yeah, that's you can be in a concert I mean. yeah, if, and if, take a picture of loads of people. If, if, and then if, tweet you, it. if you can't recognize them, then it's not a thing. I, I think, um, they, I think it was clarified where they would say that if it was a public event, like a concert or, say, a political rally or whatever, that's a public space rather than somebody is traveling. You know, that, I think there's the distinction right. there. Yeah, it's not someone's house, right? If, if you're going to somebody's house and you're taking a photo of it, say J.K. Rowling, right? So several people have harassed her at her house. That would be doxing, right? And they have been gotten rid of. So yeah. I, I don't know where the question is here, James. 
Uh, it was actually a question that got texted to me. It wasn't on my list. Let's move on. To be honest, I'm I'm done. <laughs> so, okay, do you, do you want to leave? <laughs> I'm happy to. If you want to carry on doing questions. Uh, yeah, maybe I will. You're welcome to. This will be the first time an interview, interviewer has ever walked out of an interview. How to turn tables. <laughs> <laughs> How long are you going to sit here for? We're just going to pack up around you. Is that yeah, how it's going to work? Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, all right, well, look, Elon, thank you very much for talking to me. Oh, you're welcome. So that was fun, Elon. <laughs> yeah. I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Uh, <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> well, like, this, is, this has really given me a long list of feature improvements that we need for spaces. That's oh, I'm yeah. I, I, mm, yeah, I have a bunch of suggestions. <laughs> Not right now, but... I do. Being on Twitter Spaces every single day, there are a host of problems. Um, first of all, where's the desktop app? Right. I want to connect yeah. with my nice microphone. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the phone I mean, overheats. It's, it's pretty good, but it's like you know, it's yeah. A lot. A lot of things need to be improved. That's for sure. Oh yeah. There's a laundry list of things. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, cool. How often do you stock Twitter Spaces? I'm. I'm like you know. I'm sure you have like an alt account or something. Do you? Do you stock Twitter Spaces? Uh, no, not really. Um, no. And uh, I actually didn't even have a burner account. Um, I, I do have uh, a second account at this point because uh, I need to test the uh, app before it goes out. So it's right. kind of like a beta test uh, account. Um, but uh, no, I don't. I don't have a burner or anything like that. Um, okay. And never, yeah, never have had. So, so no, uh, Pierre. Uh, what 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 was that guy's Pierre name? Delecto. Oh, Pierre Delecto. Pierre Delecto. Pierre Delecto. Pierre Delecto. Pierre Delectos and Zaza Demons. Yeah, none of those. Okay. <laughs> nope. Um. So. Well, let's see. Uh, I mean, any any uh, key points anyone wants to make? Uh, otherwise, we'll I'll sign off in a few minutes. Um. I'm. I just. Um, I don't know if the other guys do. I'm, I think whole whole Mars blog is right here. Maybe he has some questions. Yeah, I had one question about Twitter. Uh, Elon, some media had been reporting today that Twitter bought ten thousand GPUs for some type of generative AI project. And I also noticed that on Twitter there were a couple of people who mentioned working at AI infrastructure, the supercomputing team at both Tesla and Twitter. I was wondering if you could share anything with us about what Twitter's working on there and if there's maybe any synergies, maybe, you know, Twitter using Dojo or something like that, or what exactly is going on with this project? Um, well, it seems like everyone, um, you know, and their dog <laughs> is buying uh, GPUs at this point. You know, it's kind of getting to the point where, like, you're going to have to buy GPUs in a back alley. Um, so, uh there's certainly um, a lot of people buying GPUs, uh, and uh, Twitter and Tesla are certainly buying GPUs, and we're also working on Dojo. Um, so I, I think there's a lot of potential there with Dojo that people don't realize. Um, so, yeah. Oh, actually, I do have a question, and well, I guess people keep DMing me. Uh, they're wondering what's the future of the Twitter files. Uh, do you still have any journalists working on these things, or no? Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, at a certain point, we need to move on from the Twitter files, but um, I think there's a few things uh, left. Uh, but uh, you know, generally, I think we, there's, there's not there's not a lot uh, that I'm aware of that's left. So um, it's mostly just like you know, let's m just move on to the future. Um, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, yeah, I think that's more or less true. Uh, what what, is, what what are your thoughts on you know companies like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok? kind of following Twitter's footsteps. You know, I think Facebook recently did a verification thing for $15, which is like double the price. But what's your, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, like I said, uh, my opinion is that uh, any uh, social media organization that does not insist on paid verification uh, will be worthless. Um, because at this point, uh, you take Instagram, for example, uh, if you, you can generate an infinite number of those picks using MidJourney. Um, yep. And you know, for free, uh, well, not for free, but for, for very little. Um, and you can get at this point, um, modern AI can pass, you know, any human verification test. Um, so, the the only solution that I can think of is to increase the cost of of fake accounts. Um, so, if if somebody's paying on the order of eight bucks a month, that's a hundred dollars a year. 
Um, and they also need to get a credit card and a uh, phone number from a reputable, reputable car carrier. So, so then like the, the, it's much harder to create like a million bots. Um, whereas uh, if you don't require those things, uh, it's trivial, frankly, uh, to create a million bots. Um, and they'll all seem very human um, and, and will take very little computing effort to do so. Um, so that's why I think basically uh, any social media that does not require um, uh, paid verification will basically uh, cease to be relevant. Makes sense. Um, speaking of generative uh, content, uh, get, is it possible for you guys to add a flag that says that, hey, this video or this image is, uh, you know, for like, like I make a lot of AI generated content and a lot of it looks real, right? I put a, one of Donald Trump uh, making out with uh, Gavin Newsom and a lot oh, of God. people thought it was real. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> on the timeline, right? If you have anything, it looks pretty real. Um, right? And yeah. Including the voice. That, that can get the voice matched yep. and the video matched. I mean, it, it's really gonna get. It's really getting to the point where you, uh, it'll be quite easy to generate uh, extremely realistic uh, fake videos, images, and so forth, um, and, and voice. Yeah. Um, I mean, I saw uh, like a fake, um, like <laughs> Joe Rogan interview, um, and it really sounded like Joe Rogan's voice. Mm -hmm. um, I sent it to, to Joe, and he was like, "Whoa, this is crazy." <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I think verification is going to be extremely fundamental in the future. Uh, that's why we're so focused on it. So, I mean, the reason I brought that up is, you know, as a content creator, uh, I'd like to keep making those and I don't want to necessarily fool people, right? So would it be possible to, I don't know, add a flag to it so that, you know, content creators can say, hey, this is AI generated content. Don't take it seriously. It's a parody. Well, I think in, in the in the tweet, you know, in the post, uh, I think that it would be advisable to say that, that this is not real. Right. If, if it is something that can be mm -hmm. um, potentially misinterpreted. Um, okay. So it's all but, I mean, it, it, it was crazy how viral that, uh, you know, picture of, of, of the Pope with the, you know, awesome Balenciaga. jacket. Balenciaga? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that was and, one and, of Joe Biden falling off the airplane. I mean, I made that one. <laughs> that, that, was, that was good. You could also well, I mean, the, 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 Honestly, this is like the, the best advertising that Balenciaga has ever gotten in, in their entire mm -hmm. Um Like the Harry Potter Balenciaga uh, demon flying fox one was was genius. Oh, that was good. amazing. Work of um, art. He did a D1 today. Yeah. Lord of the Rings, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, and actually, even, even the, the AI fashion is great. Right. I mean, if, if I was a fashion designer, I'd be taking ideas from this because the stuff it Absolutely. makes is actually original, right? Yeah. I, the, the AI fashion is incredible. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, just can, can we just like print that somehow or make it? Because uh, uh, yeah. it's, it's amazing. Um, Maybe you should patent the idea, you know, just have like an AI <laughs> fashion generator thing that prints them out. And, you know, it's like a, like, I think there's craft or something, right? Like the clothing manufacturer thing that you can sort of do it at home. Yeah. Yeah, patent it. <laughs> you can make so much money. Well, I, I, I don't really believe in patents, actually. Uh, it's, okay. it's really make it open source. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, there's really some um, amazing uh, AI generated uh, clothing. It's uh, really mm -hmm. cool. Um, and that, that <laughs> I really love that one with the Pope. And that went viral. A lot of people thought that the Pope uh, actually had that outfit, uh, which is not like totally out of the question because there's a lot of amazing fashion in Italy. So it's possible yep. that some, you know, fashion house made a really epic uh, code for the Pope, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, but that, that was, that was obviously AI generated. I mean, we're, we're headed into a weird world here. We uh, are. Where Video like, games. Knowing, like trying to figure out what's real is super hard. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I fooled millions of people of the, uh, you know, the one of uh, uh, Joe Biden falling off the airplane. So, I mean, anything's possible, right? Well, that, I mean, he has uh, slept a few times on the stairwell, so uh, on the stairway. So that's that's you know, it's yeah. quite quite believable in that situation. So, um, yeah, a bunch of things like very close to the truth uh, are. It's quite reasonable to expect that people would interpret that as as possibly true. Um, so yeah, I think just just verification that an account is real, that material is real. Um, <laughs> the what is real anymore is an extremely fundamental question. We live um, in a post truth world, right? I mean, that's what Bill Clinton used to say. Yeah. So, well, here, so here at uh, Twitter, we, we're going to be very focused on, um, you know, figuring out what's real, and if it's not real, then, yeah, uh, you know, trying to address it.
Um, I mean, I think Nick Sawyer has been doing a great job of, um, you know, covering the news, right, like four hours ahead of the AP. So, I mean, that's a big plus for Twitter that, it, you know, you have citizen journalists now who are able to cover this stuff hours before anybody else. Yeah, I mean, if you want the real-time news, this is the best place, is Twitter. Um, yep. and, um, and, you know, like I said, you know, any given source of information is going to have some degree of inaccuracy, and we can just aspire to make that as small as possible um, and, and iterate towards um, a, you know, being closer to the truth over time. That is our goal. Um, that's a good and, goal. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good goal. And, but yeah. we're, we're, not, we're definitely not going to assert that <laughs> everything we say is, uh, every, everything you see on Twitter is, is true because it isn't. Um, yeah. I think, um, you know, it's what, 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 right. I mean, it's, once you do very skeptically yeah. uh, any organization that claims to be uh, completely truthful. Um, yeah. You know, so, because they're not. And so that 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 very claim is false. Um, uh, so, you know, I think it's important to reflect on what mistakes we're making and try to ha make fewer of them in the future. Yeah, it'll be, unlike, hey, you know, the media. Could you tell yeah. us about X Corp? Is this just something that's like a legal thing that you had to do, or is there maybe something more to it? There is something more to it. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to like tell I said, us what it is? Like, like I said, like... I, I, my, my goal is to create X the, X the Everything app, you know. Uh, okay. That's the goal. Uh, that's what we're working towards. Nice. Um, and Twitter is the, what, a first step? Yeah. It, Twitter is an accelerant to X the Everything what does that, app. What does that mean? What does it mean? Well, I guess you'll have to stay tuned to find out. Oh, I love it. <laughs> for another show. episode, I've canceled my Netflix. Tune in next. Week. Twitter, Twitter is taking my time. Yeah, <laughs> thank yeah. you for that. Like, it's very entertaining. Very entertaining. It's very entertaining. I, I was, I was thinking like, like Twitter does make me miserable at times, but I, it actually makes me yeah. uh, laugh as well. And right. you know, and yeah. I think if if it's sort of entertaining and informative, and um, that, then we're doing a good job. The, like there's the difference between Twitter and TikTok because TikTok it's mostly passive entertainment. You're just watching videos, right? But right. on Twitter, you're interacting, you're saying things to people, and when you tweet as a celebrity, there's a yeah. pretty good chance they read your tweets and they get irritated by it. Let's see you're trolling them, sure. <laughs> which is what I do. So, I mean, it's good, it's fun having that reaction. It's like it's like playing a video game, but better. Yeah, 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 totally, exactly. I mean, uh, honestly, this is uh, Twitter is troll heaven. Um, oh hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, and a lot of the media is going to hate it because they, you know, they want to control space, safe space. It's it's it's, tro it's totally troll heaven uh, on Twitter. Um, and and the thing is, like, even I, I even get trolled, and I'm like, God, damn, yeah. I, like, I, why did I get trolled again? That was really dumb. right. Yeah, so, I get trolled every I, day, and it's like, ah, oh, well, you know, part and parcel of being on Twitter. Yeah, it's totally. It's worth on it. That on that note, did you see the guy who got charged for a meme on Twitter? What were your thoughts on that? I know you commented on it. I didn't know if you got to look more into it. His name's Douglas Mackey. Oh, that's the guy who, uh, I guess, was accused of election interference or something? Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even that's a counselor you from South Park? Your, your vote or something? <laughs> yeah. Like, people shouldn't believe everything that they see online. And, you know, I don't think that should be criminal. No, I, I think criminal is a that's a, it's over the top there. I would agree with that. That's they went too far. Um, you know, if if that's the standard for uh, throwing someone in prison, then there should be a lot a lot of people in prison. Yeah, what are you in prison for? Oh, meme crimes. You know, that's... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's like murder is running free. You know, so yeah, it's crazy. exactly, precisely. I mean, look at San Francisco, right? Pretty damn good example. Um, look yeah, at crime there. Ugh. I, I, I was in San Francisco, I don't know, a decade ago, it was, it was fine. And now I look at it and it's like, I don't recognize this place anymore. Yeah, um, it really needs, something needs to be done about the crime situation in, in San Francisco. It's really the crazy. area around Twitter's headquarters especially is like, zombie apocalypse is the perfect way to describe it. Uh, yeah, literally. It's like, if people sort of think, oh, maybe you're exaggerating. I'm like, no, you can just no. literally come here any day of the week, including like, you know, 10 in the morning or 2 in the afternoon. Like, we're not talking like, you know, midnight stuff. Uh, literally mid-morning, you know, driving into Twitter, it looks like, it, it looks insane. Um, so, it just, people can just come here and see for their own, with their own eyes. It's, 
you know, it's next level. Or, you know, watch the videos on Twitter because it's safer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as, as sad as it is, right? Oh, man, like every it's, single it's day. It's intense. I mean, it's like, you're like, whoa. Um, I mean, it, it can be overplayed too. I mean, we, we, I spend my time often being outside Twitter with a camera doing lives. Really? Right? Yeah. Outside Twitter? Yeah. Like, are you brave? What are you doing? Like, pointing a camera at the sign or something? Pointing a camera at me with Twitter behind. Do, 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 do really? Are you serious? Yeah. Okay. Why? Is it because it's more sort of uh, gives an ambiance or something? Yeah. You must have seen the news, right? <laughs> that's, that's... I know. I, I, well, I, I suppose I have seen a few things where uh, there's sort of uh, people doing interviews uh, with the Twitter sign in the background. And I, I guess that's more interesting than just being in a studio or something. Well, I mean, next time I do it, you can just invite me in. I'll okay, just... sure. Just shoot me a note. Great. Um, but it's, it's, the W is now a background color, so... <laughs> Look, I, I hold up. I held a poll, and there was a strong yes on Twitter, removing the yeah. W. Right, yeah. you got to abide by the people. Right? Vox Populi, Vox Day. Exactly. <laughs> In certain <laughs> exceptions, <laughs> normal as we've already established. No, I just I, look. I, I, I said I, I said I would appoint a new CEO, and I did. And it's my dog. <laughs> I, mean, I don't want people to have. What do you got against dogs? They're fine. Dogs are great. They hit dogs. It's just, it's just a, only dog haters would be opposed to making the dog the CEO. Yeah, um, I see so, people saying, "Oh, you promised to quit and step down." I'm like, "Well, no. He, the the, the dog's a CEO. You know, yeah, the CEO. dog's a CEO. Like, what are you complaining about? Yeah, it's like, a great dog. I mean, um, there are towns where the mayor is the dog, right? They elect a dog because all the people suck. And, yeah, and it's the same thing. Yeah, dog's always cool. Yeah, it's got great instincts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. So, um, anyway, I hope people have a good time on Twitter and learn things. And, um, you know, like I said, the acid test is unregretted user time. And if it's uh, unregretted user time is growing, then we're doing the right thing. So, it's good. I like to hear that. I mean, I love Twitter. Uh, and uh, it's good to see uh, things go onward and upward. All right. Sounds good. Well, good talking, guys. Uh, I'll, I'll head back to work. And uh, th thanks for all your feedback. Yeah, likewise. Three million people joined this space. Wow, oh, three million! Yeah, Amazing. yeah. Dang, people really <laughs> like that part of the interview where you started interviewing them. <laughs> more oh yeah, oh, that you're good solid. at grilling journalists. This is uh, Elon Musk interviewing the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here. By the way. Still, wait, still you, here. you can still hear me? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. Well. All right. Well. Uh, thanks for coming. Fun time. We enjoyed that. Yeah. Thanks, Elon. Yeah. Thanks for doing it. <laughs> thanks for the awesome. uh, entertainment. You're welcome. You're most welcome. All right. Uh, thanks. Uh, signing off, guys. Right, Bye. Bye. Bye.